What's up, fam? Um, it's me, and I'm back. I wanted to bring y'all some um information and, um on the so-called breaking news, which is that they have um the House has impeached Donald Trump, which is no surprise. Um, the House is a Democratic run; it's held by the Democrats. The majority, the the the, the Democrats have the majority in the House, so um. That's no surprise that they actually brought down articles of, of impeachment against Donald Trump, which simply means um, that they are charging him with some stuff. They are charging him with uh, stuff like abuse of power and things of that nature. So now he has to be tried by, um, if I'm not mistaken, now he has to be tried by the Senate. Yeah, it 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 goes now. It is is not the end of the process. It does not automatically mean that Trump will be forced to resign or that the, the, you know or that they they will um evict him from office or uh, or whatever. It that's not what it means. That it does not mean that he's uh, that that this that this impeachment means that Donald Trump is automatically gone. That's not what this this that's not what this means. Um but I want black folk, I want foundational black Americans to understand what this means. I want you to understand what this uh, uh, process entails. I want you to understand um, how this process will affect you if it affects foundational black Americans at all. Um, we need to have an understanding of it. We need to have an understanding of the process. We need to have an understanding of what comes next. Um, so that folks won't come out and tell you and hand you a whole bunch of bullshit that's just that, a whole bunch of bullshit. You know, this that's just a whole bunch of rambling or a whole bunch of fear mongering trying to get you to be afraid that this is going to happen or that's going to happen or trying to get you to believe that, you know, with Trump being impeached or whatever, it's just going to dramatically change your life or dramatically change the the, the political climate or whatever. No. So that's the only reason why I'm here doing this video is because I just want to explain for those of us who don't know and for those of us who, you know, have not followed impeachment because Donald Trump makes only the third president um, in the history of the United States to be impeached. And you, you, know, you need to understand that this whole impeachment process from beginning to end has just been a distraction. It's just been a deflection so that especially the democrats can can you know can avoid certain issues they can definitely avoid talking about reparations they can definitely avoid talking about tangibles for foundation of black americans they can definitely avoid some of the political issues that are going on um and it's just a horse and pony show that's all it is it's just a horse and pony show it's it, it's not anything it's not anything real you you know you 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 got the democrats over here talking about they impeaching trump for his abuse of power and 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 and, and, and whatever may have been, may have happened or may have been said or whatever in the ukraine you know they tried with the russian with the, all of that talking about he was colluding with the russians and all of this kind of stuff and they keep on trying to use the russians and 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 russian bots and all of this kind of stuff to explain away what happened in 2016 and to display to explain away what happened in 2018 and all of that because they don't want to give credit where credit is due and that is that black folks have started listening to new voices Black folks have started to open their eyes and realize that we have no power and, and, and black folks are interested in black empowerment. They are interested in being empowered and we're no longer listening to the voices that we used to listen to. We're no longer listening to the Democrats. We're no longer listening to the black politicians. We're no longer listening to the puppets of white supremacy and the puppets of the Dem Democratic Party that they send out in front of us to, to, to hand us all of this bull to keep us in line. We're no longer listening to those voices. We're no longer listening to the voices of the old media. We're no longer listening to the voices of the white mainstream media. We are now listening to voices that are educating us, voices that are waking us up voices that are pointing us in the direction of the truth, voices that are exposing what's really, really going on. 
And that is scaring the death. I, I, I mean, it's terrifying the Democratic Party. And it's also tearing, terrifying these black politicians and, and these black boot licks and, and these black faces of, of, of white supremacy that they have been sending out because that's how they got their bread and butter. That's the reason why we call them butter biscuits. That's how they got their bread and butter. They got their bread and butter from, from the white establishment, from the, the white supremacy establishment. And they don't want to lose that. They don't want to, they don't want to lose those paychecks. So everybody's terrified. So understand that this is just another tactic. That's all this is. This is just another tactic. This is just political theater. That's all. And how does it affect foundational black Americans? It doesn't at all. It doesn't affect us at all. Whether Trump is in office or, 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 or Republican is in office or Democrat is in office, studies have shown that the black condition in America and the condition of the black community in America doesn't change a whole, whole lot from one presidential uh, uh, um How, how, do, how do I, from one presidential term to another, it doesn't change a whole lot for us. And that's a shame because after 50, 60 years of loyally uh, voting for Democrats, the, the ones who claim that they got our backs, the one who claims that they care about us, the ones who claim you know, that we need to support them because the, 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 the Republicans are so racist and, and all the Republican party uh, policies and laws are meant to hurt us or whatever. And, and because we have believed that and we have voted for them uh, faithfully, loyally for the last 50, 60 years, it would seem like our situation would be a whole lot better in the United States. And it would seem like or once a Democrat was gone and a Republican was in, things would get a little worse for us. It doesn't change much for us. From one presidential term to the next, it doesn't change much for us. Actually, Obama's eight years did us more harm than probably any other presidential term. We lost a lot of our wealth. Look at all the black people that were slaughtered and, and, and murdered in the streets. By, by by race soldiers, by, by race, race soldiers, police officers, uh, uh, the, the George Zimmermans of the world or whatever. So this is not going to affect us, period. But I still want you to know what this process entails and I still want you to know what's next in this process. I still want you to know where they're going to go from here. It's good for you to know that. You know, even if you're not interested in it, because I'm not interested in it, because Trump is not our problem. Trump has never been our problem. We didn't put Trump in the White House. We didn't vote for him. So he's he's never been our problem. Trump is their problem. They can handle Trump whatever way they see fit to handle Trump. But understand, Trump is not being impeached because of anything that he did while he was president. That's not the reason why Trump is being impeached. Trump is not being impeached for, for whatever alleged crimes he may have uh, committed while he was president or for whatever abuses of power or whatever. That's not the reason why Trump is being impeached. If that was the case, all Washington would be cleared out. If abuses of power and, 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 and crimes while holding office and all of that kind of stuff, if that was the reason why people are actually impeached or, or actually forced to resign or actually fired or actually pushed out of office or whatever, all of Washington, D.C. would be cleared out. Whole Capitol Hill would be cleared out. And we find out the Democrats, you know, were just as involved in, 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 in the stuff that was going on as far as the Russians were concerned back in 2016. We find out the Democrats were just as involved in that. You know, we found out while all that was going on in 2016, Hillary Clinton's a lot of her supporters and donors and all of this, you know, at least eight of them have been charged with money laundering and, 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 and funneling money and lying about campaign contributions and, and all of this kind of stuff. We find out that, that Joe Biden and his son were, were you know, deeply involved in, in whatever was going on in the Ukraine. 
So if you're going to get rid of Donald Trump for abuse of power, then you got to look at all of them. You got to look at every last one of them because I just did a story uh, uh, back here about a week ago, week and a half ago about the eight donors, uh, uh, the contributors or whatever to the Hillary Clinton campaign that, you know, they found out that they were money, money laundering and funneling money and, 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 you know, and trying to hide campaign contributions and all of this kind of stuff. You know, now they're talking about, uh, you know, they've been talking about J Joe Biden's, uh, the part that Joe Biden and his son were playing in this whole Ukraine mess that's come up. So if we're going to clean house up there on Capitol Hill, then, you know, more than Donald Trump got to go. More than Donald Trump need to be, you, you know, needs to be put in front of, uh, of whatever kind of committee or whatever to answer for their actions. So that's not what this is about. This is this is not about, you know, they, they just, you know, they just couldn't take his criminal behavior and, and, and his criminal activity and his abuse of power any longer. You can best well believe some folks have sat down behind closed doors. Some deals have been brokered. You understand what I'm saying? Some decisions have been made. Some folks are going along with this and other folks are going along with that and all of that. But they all got at the end of the day, they all got the same agenda. Why? Because they're the left wing and the right wing of the same white supremacy bird. Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. has made it clear to us and told us over and over and over again that white, white supremacy takes both sides of any argument. They take both sides of any fight. That's the reason why if you go back in history, you'll understand that the, 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 the bankers, the, the big national bankers, the international bankers, uh, or, or who run most of this, uh, the, who are really the shadow government, you know, the Rothschilds and 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 all those and that and that um, burger clan that has that meeting uh, once a year, and 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 you know, and and uh, uh, J P Morgan Chase and all these big international bankers, you know, you'll find that. They, you know, Rothschild sent all his, sent his sons out and spread them out, you know, to do business with the different countries and the different nations and all of that. And, and you'll find if you go back in history, you'll find that they have um, down through history funded each size of a war. If there was a war, if there was a conflict, they have funded each side. So. White supremacy always takes both sides of the argument. So, you know, this, 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 this is nothing to get all upset about. This is nothing to get all up in arms about. Uh, this is nothing to be wondering about. This is nothing for you to allow to cause you to, to, to get distracted or to lose your focus from the black agenda. Tangibles 2020, reparations. No tangibles, no vote. But again, we need to be informed and we need to know the steps of this process so that people can't come to us, you know, and hand us some kind of false narrative or some lie or hand us a load of bull crap, you know, and have us thinking that this is going to affect us some kind of way when it's not. And it can't affect us as far as the 2020 uh, elections are concerned because we have decided that we're leaving all of that behind us for now. We're staying away from those processes. We're staying away from, you know, all of this voting and all of that. We're staying away from that for 2020. So it certainly won't affect us. But I'm reading this um, article from CBS News. The House impeached Trump. What, what happens next? So, yes, yesterday they officially impeached Donald Trump. This is by Grace Seegers. December the 19th, 2019, 12 a.m. from CBS News. The House of Representatives voted to impeach President Trump on Wednesday. This is the third time in history it has taken this action against the president. The Democratic-controlled House voted 230 to 197 with one present vote, largely along party lines on the first article, Abuse of Power. All but three Democrats supported his impeachment and all of the Republicans rejected it. All but three Democrats supported it. 
all of the Republicans rejected it. Okay. Did you think that it was not going to pass? They're just telling you it's a Democratic controlled house. On the second question of obstruction of Congress, the vote was 229 to 198 with one member voting present. But the impeachment process isn't over yet. It now moves to the Republican controlled Senate. Here are the next steps. Okay. The Democratic controlled House voted to impeach him. Like they said, mostly along party lines because all of the Republicans rejected it. All of them. Right? Okay. Now it's going to the Republican controlled Senate because that's where the major decision will be made in the Senate. And the Senate is controlled. The, the Senate has the majority. The Republicans have the majority in the Senate. And that's where the whole issue will really be decided. All the Democrats did was bring articles of impeachment. Basically, all the Democrats did was bring charges. Let, let's, let's think of this like in a court of law. All the Democrats did was bring charges, indict, basically indict Donald Trump for abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. That's all they did. Just like any other prosecutors in, in, in a criminal case. The prosecutors go to the grand jury and the grand jury decides, okay, we're going to indict, which simply means we're going to bring these charges, right? So basically, Donald Trump has now been charged with abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. But now, just like any other criminal case, you got to get all the evidence together. You got to get the witnesses together and all of this. And you got to go before the judge. You understand? You got to you got to go before the judge. So now it's time for Donald Trump to quote unquote go to court, right? Okay, here are the next steps. Pick house impeachment managers. There are a few procedural steps to be taken before the house sends the articles of impeachment to the Senate. The chamber must agree on who will be the, who will conduct the impeachment trial in the Senate. That's what they got to decide now. They got to they got to agree on who will conduct the impeachment trial in the Senate. The, 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 the Senate becomes the courthouse. The House impeachment managers act as prosecutors and, and present the case against Mr. Trump. So they've got to pick these uh, House impeachment impeachment managers who. They are members of the House of Representatives. Okay, you know, the Democrats run the House. The, Democrat, the Democrats have the majority in the House. So they'll pick these prosecutors or, or these House impeachment managers who act as prosecutors and who will present the, the case against President Trump. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi now can now name the managers at any point, And the House will then debate and vote on the resolution naming the managers. Okay, so now they got to have a debate. After she names these managers who will work as prosecutors, who will, who will function as prosecutors, after she names them, then they have to debate. Then they have to debate that, and they have to vote on the resolution naming the manager. Right? Some names have already been floated by Democrats, including Rep Representative Justin Amash, an independent from Michigan who left the Republican Party earlier this year. The House adjourned. Wednesday evening, a little before 9 p.m. without settling this matter yet. So th that still hasn't been settled. So they still haven't settled on, agreed on, or voted, voted on these House impeachment managers, right? Um, it could wait until a later date to name the House managers. So if they're talking about later dates and all this kind of stuff, and they still haven't decided who's going to be the House impeachment managers and all of this, can you imagine how long this is going to drag out? Okay, let's go to the next step. After this is completed, after they pick these House in, 
impeachment managers who act as prosecutors. After this is completed, the House will then formally deliver the articles of impeachment to the Senate, which must immediately act on them. So after they get these managers, right, then they deliver the formal charges, basically, to the Senate. Which much and the Senate has to act on them immediately, right? And in this article, they have a few uh, 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 folks listed who could possibly be um, House impeachment managers, right? Then the next step is prepare for Senate impeachment trial, right? Now remember, the trial is being held in the Republican-controlled. Senate. And remember, none of the Republicans voted to impeach Trump. None of them. So now his fate is in the hands of the Republican controlled Senate. That's where this trial is going to be. After the Senate has received the articles, it must notify the House when the managers can present them. That is to read them to the Senate. So these managers who act as prosecutors, will go in and they will read these articles of impeachment to the Senate. They will read the charges to the Senate. That's basically what it is. After House managers present the articles of impeachment on the Senate floor, they leave until the Senate invites them back for the trial. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has said the trial would likely happen in January, right around the time the bowl games end. For those who aren't college football play fans, the last bowl game is expected to be played January the 6th. Okay? But now, that's a tentative date because they still haven't agreed on these House impeachment managers that act as prosecutors, the ones who actually have to go in before the Senate and, you, and, and on the Senate floor read these charges to the Senate. So that's a tentative date. That's not anything that's set in stone. This January 6th. Then they hold a trial. The Constitution offers vague guidelines for how an impeachment trial should be conducted. The senators are as jurors. The, the senators act as the jurors. Right? Okay, remember, we're in a courtroom. Right? The House impeachment managers, these are, these are, these are Democrats, they are the prosecutors, right? The senators act as jurors. And you'll have a judge, right? The chief justice of the Supreme Court presides as the judge, right? Okay. The rest of the rules are up to the Senate. A simple majority of the Senate must agree on whether to call witnesses, what kind of evidence to admit, and how long to make the trial. In the event that there's a tie on questions regarding evidence and witnesses, Chief Justice John Roberts would cast the tie-breaking vote. The, Senate guide, the Senate's guidelines suggest the, the presiding officer, the Chief Justice, may rule on all questions of evidence, including but not limited to questions of relevancy, materiality, and redundancy of evidence and incidental questions, the guidelines say. McConnell has expressed interest in having a quick trial without witnesses, but Senator Charles Schumer, now remember, Charles Schumer is the same one who back in 2018 gave this, uh, 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 what was this guy's name? I'm trying to remember his name. Gave this uh, Saudi businessman who was a part of all of this money laundering and everything for, 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 for the, 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 the Clinton campaign in 2016, you know, and he was a part of a whole lot of money laundering, all kinds of kinds of schemes and all of this. As a matter of fact, I'll link that video that I did ex exposing all of that. I'll link that video to, in the description box. But Schumer, the Democrat Schumer, is the one that gave this criminal who was already a known, he's been investigated by the FBI, money has been seized, 
in money laundering and, 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 and illegal offline gambling and, and pornography and all of this kind of stuff. Chuck, Charles Schumer, Chuck Schumer is the one that appointed him to this, 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 uh, 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 some kind of religious panel in 2018. And this was a man that has this known at that point, as far back as 2010, they had been investigating him and, and, and seizing money and, and, and all kinds of charges being all brought up for money laundering and all kinds of stuff. But then this Chuck Schumer guy is going to then turn around and give him an appointment on some federal panel for religious freedom or something. Like I said, I'll link that in the description box. Okay. McConnell has expressed interest in having a quick trial without witnesses, but Senator Charles Schumer, the minority leader, wants to hear from four administration officials who were asked to testify in the House impeachment inquiry, but did not appear. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, former National Security Advisor John Bolton, Senior Advisor to the Acting White House Chief of Staff Robert Blair, and Michael Duffy. Associate Director of National Security, Office of Management and Budget. So these are the four people that this Schumer guy wants to make sure are asked to be, are called to be witnesses, right? Okay, then the next step is vote, vote for or against convicting the president, right? Okay. After the trial concludes, the Senate will conduct a public vote on whether to convict the president and remove him from office. Two-thirds of senator support is required for that to happen. Given the Republican majority in the Senate, McConnell believes Mr. Trump will be acquitted and will remain in office. Because you got to remember, zero Republicans, zero Republicans in the House voted to impeach Trump. And now this Republican controlled Senate is who will decide whether or not to convict him of these charges that they have brought against him and remove him from office. So that's the process. I just wanted to get y'all, I, I just wanted to get everybody up to speed on what comes next, the process. First thing is they got to pick these House impeachment managers who will act as prosecutors. And they will be Democrats. They will come from the House. And they will probably all be Democrats. After you do that, then you have to prepare for Senate impeachment trial. After they pick these, these, these House impeachment managers who act as prosecutors, then they go before the Senate and they read these charges. They read the articles of impeachment, which are, which are simply reading out the charges. And he has been charged with uh, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, right? Okay, then after that, they leave the floor, they leave the Senate floor, and they are not invited back until the trial begins, right? Then they hold the trial. And the trial cons consists of these House managers which act as prosecutors, they will, they will, they will, they are prosecuting. You have the senators in, 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 in the Senate, you have the senators who are acting as the jurors. And then you have the chief justice, chief justice, John Roberts, who's acting, he's, he's the presiding judge, right? Then they have to go through how much evidence they're going to listen to, where the witness is going to be called that whole nine yards, just like you would in any other trial. And then after all the evidence has been heard, you, you know, witnesses have been called or not called or whatever the case may be, then the Senate will conduct a public vote on whether to convict the president and remove him from the office. It, it requires two thirds of the Senate support in order for that to happen, in order for him to be convicted and removed from office. So that's the process. 
And I just simply wanted to make sure that we all were up to speed on the process. And we are all up to speed on what happens next. Now, I, I, I got one question that I want to pose to you. How much sense did it make for the Democrats to push for impeachment when they knew that Republicans control the Senate? When they knew that Republicans control the very place where he has to be convicted and removed from office. Yes, they knew that they ran the House. They knew that they had the majority in the House, which meant because they had the majority in the House, more than likely, yes, they would be able to get the vote to impeach. But getting the vote to impeach means absolutely nothing if you don't control the place where the final decision has to be made. And the final decision has to be made in the Senate. And Democrats don't control the Senate. They do not hold the majority in the Senate. Republicans hold the majority in the Senate. And the Republicans have already let you know where they fall. None of them, not one Republican voted to impeach Donald Trump. So if they didn't vote, if they didn't vote to impeach him, what makes you think they're going to vote? to convict him and remove him from office. So tell me that this was more than a deflection. Tell me that this was more than a distraction when the Democrats already knew that. The Democrats already know this process. They already knew exactly what was going to happen. They weren't 100% sure that they would get enough votes to impeach. They already knew the Republicans we're not going to vote for impeachment. And they already know that they don't control anything in the Senate. So they will not have the last say so of whether or not he's convicted and removed from office. So it's a total waste of time. But let them waste their time. They're not wasting our time. They're wasting their time. We can't, we just can't allow this to be what they want it to be. And that is a distraction, distracting us. From, from, from our main focus, which is tangibles, reparations. That's our focus. That's got to be remain, that's got to remain our focus as a whole. We can't let these little sideshows and, and, and all of this political theater and, and, you know, and all of this political drama that they putting on. I mean, I, I mean, they doing a scandal scene, you know, right there in real life. You, you know, we can't let all of that dist distract us and deflect us and get up, get us off course and all of this and all of this talk about Russia and the Ukraine and who was involved in what and who was doing this and who was doing that. We can't let all that affect us. We have got to stay on our square and we have got to stay focused. Our focus is tangible 2020. Our focus is reparations. Our focus is not leaders. Our folks, our, our focus is not, you know, some political movement. Our focus is not any political party. Our focus is tangibles 2020 and reparations. And building our economy. Getting to a place where we understand that we have got to practice group group economics and we've got to practice group politics. Group politics means, OK, the whole group is moving in the same direction as far as politics is concerned. So our whole group. As foundational Black Americans, the, the, uh, descendants of American slaves, uh, uh, American descendants of slaves, whatever you decide, whichever uh, 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 acronym you want to go with, as far as your lineage is concerned, we're all the same people. We're all native Black Americans. And we have got our political, we have got to be codified and unified and practicing group economics, I mean, group, group politics, just like we do to practice group economics. 
Just like we've got to keep the black money in the black community. You know, at least let it pass around six, seven, eight, ten times in the black community before it goes outside of the black community. Well, we've got to keep our vote in the black community the same way. Until somebody is offering us something that is equal to our vote, something that is just as valuable as our vote. Just like we got to stop giving all our money away to, to, to other groups and to the dominant society and all that, we got to do the same thing with our vote. We've got to stop just giving it away. And we've got to hold it in the black community until somebody is going to offer us something that is just as valuable as our vote. So while they're putting on all their shows and, 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 you know, and doing all their political maneuvering and, 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 you know, and telling all their lies and all of this, you know, while they're doing all that, fine, let them do it. We need to be over here practicing what we need to practice. Group economics, getting our economy built up developing a real economic base, keeping the black dollar in the black community as long as we possibly can, and keeping the black vote in the black community until somebody offers us something of value for that vote. It's just that simple. We have got to practice group economics and we have got to practice group politics. You know, you got black folks running in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different directions. That's not group economics and that's not group politics. We have got to start moving and operating as a cohesive group. We will always have two or three stragglers, but if the if if, if the majority of us are focused on the same thing. If the, the majority of us are concentrated on the same thing, concentrated in the same place, making the same move, then that will show how much power we have. We did it with Kamala Harris. Under all of these different acronyms, we still got it done with Kamala Harris. Under all of those different acronyms, we still got things done as far as shifting that power in 2016. And there were no whole lot of acronyms floating around. There was only the voices of black media explaining to us what was going on and, and, and informing us, you know, and pulling the, uh, the veil from off our eyes and exposing certain things. But because we worked as a cohesive group, the Democrats lost. Same thing in 2018. Because we operated as a cohesive group. And again, this was before all of these acronyms became so, uh, so popular. The Democrats lost control of the Senate. So see, it only works when we operate as a group, whether it be group economics or group politics. It only works when we operate as one. On one accord. And that accord right now should be group op uh, uh, economics, doing everything that we can to keep that black money in the black community, buying black, supporting black businesses, keeping that black money in that black community until we just can't keep it there no longer. Same thing with that black vote, keeping that black vote in the black community until somebody comes along and offers us something as far as politics is concerned, as far as an agenda is concerned. As far as, as a plan for improving the black community and black lives. Foundational black Americans. 
until somebody comes and offers us something that's just as valuable as our vote. And then we ex we make that that valuable exchange. We keep the black vote in the in the black community just like we keep the black money in the black community. That's the reason why the boycotts of the civil right era were so important. The boycotts were a whole lot more effective than the marches and the protests. The boycotts were effective. Why? Because we as black folks took our money out of the dominant society and kept it in the black community. To the point where they were closing down businesses. To the point where we were running out, we were running their businesses out of, uh, 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 they were going out of business left and right. They were having to lay off people, shutting down bus lines and, 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 and taxi lines and all of this kind of stuff. So it was the boycotts that had the most effect during the civil rights movement. Why? Because the boycotts was affecting the economy. The boycotts were affecting the common economy of, of the dominant society. It was messing with their money. It was messing with their pockets. You want their attention, you got to mess with their pockets. You got to mess with their money. You got to mess with their economy. So we don't have time to worry about what they're doing with Trump. Let them do whatever they're going to do with Trump. Like I said, he, Trump is not our problem. We didn't put him there. We got to work on building our economics. And like I said before, while we're building our economics along right alongside it, we've got to be building our defenses. So that as we build our economics and as we build our economic base, we are able to defend it and protect it. Unlike Tulsa back in 1921, Black Wall Street and some of the other very successful, wealthy black communities that were destroyed during the early 1900s. Because they didn't have any defense mechanism set up. They didn't have any way to defend those communities and to defend that, that, that economic base. But that's what we got to be concentrating on. So I just wanted to bring you this video. Uh, I didn't mean for it to be this long. But I just wanted to bring you this video to let you know what the next steps are going to be, to let you know how this affects us, if it affects us at all, and it really doesn't. And that, you know, we got to stay on our, our square. We got to stick to our guns. You understand? We got to keep our focus and, and we got to continue right along. Just, can, just continue to move right along and keep right on doing what we're doing. We got to just continue to do what we're doing. And, 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 and those that will not listen, those that will not get on code, those that are simply determined that they're just going to go along with the status quo and they're just going to keep on doing business as usual. We got to leave them by the wayside and we just got to keep on moving. We got to keep on moving. So stay on code. Um, this article will be linked in the description box so you can go back and you can read and, and, and you know you can keep up with the steps of this so-called process um for those of us who just want to know what comes next or, or those of us who need we all need to know what comes next so that like i said they can't come out and tell us a bunch of bullshit and come out and tell us a bunch of lies and present a bunch of uh, false narratives and try to scare people into believing what you because of this you got to vote you got no you don't no you don't because at the bottom line, still ain't nobody offering you nothing of value for your vote. And your vote is very valuable. Keep your eyes on this immigration. Stop supporting all of this immigration. Stop supporting all of these other groups because it looked like they might be going through something where well, they're living better than us. 
They got more privileges and more power and more rights. You know what I'm saying? And more special protections than us. So they good. They all right. We ain't got time to concentrate on nobody but us. Nobody but us. So check the description box. Please like this video. Please share this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not. And I want to thank y'all. We have finally reached um, a thousand subscribers. So thank you so very, very much. That just makes me so happy. I really, really appreciate it. You don't know how much I appreciate it. So please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we upload videos. Um, you hit that description box so that you can see uh, this article and, and you can see the um, video I just did on, on, on these crooks that, 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 that they just charged with all that money laundering and funneling money and all of that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the 2016 campaign. And, you know, if you read that, or if you read the articles that are attached to that video, then you'll read that article where this Charles Schumer guy, Chuck Schumer, who's, who's the, 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 the minority leader in the Senate, gave, in 2018, gave this uh, appointment to this criminal. And y'all stay on code. Have a good day.